So the way I'm gonna grow them this year is gonna be kind of cool. You're back. I forgot my water. Come on. That lens is very dusty. I'll clean it off here in a second. All right, you go run your errands. We are going to uh, play in the dirt. You have fun. We will. <laughs> Good morning, beautiful people. Mom is gonna go have some like alone time. She might actually like listen to a podcast or something. All right, the name of the game today is compost. People who are tired of compost, maybe this isn't a video for you, but this is a fun day for me. All right, if you watched yesterday's video, we made some wood chips. And in this state, this is the best time to start making compost because of all the green matter. This compost in here is very much ready. Uh, I should have pulled it out probably a week and a half ago, but we had a whole bunch of rain and I missed my window and it just was a soggy mess. Uh, a couple days ago, a couple videos ago, uh, I got in here when I was doing morning chores and I repiled it just so uh, it would dry out a little bit and it has. So. What we're gonna do today, we'll take all of the finished compost out, we'll pile it up, and we will build a new compost pile. I think we're gonna do all hands on deck. Me and all the boys can probably get this knocked out in about half an hour, possibly. Maybe faster, maybe slower, but we'll find out. We're gonna get to work. All right, I'm gonna move Sasquatch out of the way. Uh, I think we're just gonna shovel into the tractor, and I'm just gonna pile the finished compost on top of my pile that's already here. This. I'm finding that having the compost at the top of the property is really beneficial because it's all downhill from here. I guess pun intended, not pun, that wasn't a pun. You get what I'm trying to say. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna move the truck out of the way. We have it back, by the way. Uh, there's still a lot of work that has to be done, but we need a family vehicle right at this moment. So even though I got in here the other day and I scraped up a bunch of this, uh, there's still a whole bunch that was just really compacted. And so we're digging that up now and that'll go at the bottom of the pile. But yeah, it's pretty stinky. It smells like compacted anaerobic compost, uh, AKA chicken poop. That's what it smells like, just rank chicken poop. So we'll get all the stinky stuff. That'll come over, it'll go on top of this pile right here and then I guess the stuff that's in the, the compost ring, that stuff will start getting put on top. Basically, we're turning turning a compost pile right now. It'll work pretty good. What are you doing, sister? Are you out here having fun? Are you on the tractor? Oh, is that how you steer the tractor? There's our wood chips. We just need a garden hose. Because there's so much green mixed in with those wood chips, this will be the best pile. Just chipping up whole small trees like I did yesterday. This is the perfect ratio. It's basically just add water at this point. We got our compost ring set back up. All we have to do is water it and fill it up. All right, and there you have it. I would like to point out my massive pile of compost that I'm building out here. That's a good sight. I think what's scary is how fast that is gonna disappear. Our plant out date is in about a week and a half uh, for the garden, and I'm gonna top dress all of the beds with compost. And I can tell you right there, that's about two cubic yards. It's not enough. 
Not even close. Okay, release the check-ins. See how long it takes them to climb on up there. I gotta inspect and see what's going on. First one, second one. Oh yeah, they're gonna eat all the greens out of it. Yeah, you can see I'm scratching. Pretty much, I'm just gonna monitor this. If it needs a little extra boost, uh, I can go get some of my poo smoothie that's down there. I have a fish tank bubbler and a fish five gallon drum of cow, cow manure, chicken poop, biochar. Uh, biochar. Uh, basically, it's my biochar charging tank. Uh, but I can use the liquid as a compost inoculant. I may do that regardless, just to see how hot I can get this pile. One of the nice things about getting a pile nice and hot keeps them from scratching it out as fast and lets it compost a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, I've gotta go water some pigs. So I'm gonna go do that. Anybody, which I'm sure there's a lot of you, drag hoses on a regular, do yourself a favor, get quick connects. It is the bee's knees. Y'all look like you're adjusting to being away from mom just fine. All right, so since I am sitting over here waiting for the pig's water to fill up, I figured I'd show you guys what these sheep did. So here's a day of grazing. That's what it looked like. That's what they did. I was actually worried. The cow does not eat the seed heads and the taller, like real tall grass. Um, she eats all the, you know, the ice cream. She eats the candy and ice cream first. Uh, I suppose eventually she might eat the seed heads, but for the most part she won't. So I have to come behind her with the scythe and I have to cut all the seed heads that way everything's down at the same height. The sheep ate all the seed heads. This honestly looks about as, like I don't even know if I could have scythed it that well. That looks really good. And you can see where they're at today. I mean, they're, they're in grass that's as tall as them, if not taller. Like pretty tall grass. It's seedy but there's a lot of good grass in here. Maybe sheep winds up being something we could do in the future. I don't know. A lot of comments in the last video when we got the sheep. Apparently a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, were, missed the part where I said we got these for meat. They, uh, they're going in the freezer next week. Like I said, my, uh, my friend was downsizing and I bought a couple of them off of him so we can put some mutton in the freezer. We didn't get sheep to have sheep like as a permanent fixture, these will be here about a week. For you guys, just a couple videos. But uh, yeah, it's kind of a cool cool little experiment to see different animals that eat different things. All right, pigs are watered, lunch is at, chicken compost is made, now I get to work in the garden, just briefly. All right, so this bed down here, I think for two years we've kind of just had random stuff in it. Last year, this was our sunflower bed. Just crammed it full of sunflowers and various other colorful things. We can see it, you know, right from the house, so it looks kind of nice. Well, what we're gonna do this year is, uh, we're gonna put something in that uh, I had actually forgot about when we were like figuring out where we're gonna stick everything. Last year, if you guys remember, up there where our corn bed is, that was where we had kukuzis growing. Kukuzis are a, uh, they're called serpent gourds. Um, they're this great big long, pretty good size gourd. We can eat them. They kind of stink. Uh, if you've ever grown a loofah, loofahs have a stink to them. They're just stinky. I would never want to eat a loofah. Kukuzis are similar. They're in the same family as a loofah, but when they reach maturity, they dry out, everything hollows out, and you're left with a big giant hollow tube. Well, when they're young and tender, and you know, you know, maybe like a foot and a half long, you can eat them, treat them like zucchini. They're actually really delicious sliced and fried. So all that to say, we can eat them. The main reason I'm growing them is for pig feed, chicken feed, they're very prolific. And we have found that they are very uh, resilient when it comes to squash beetles. Squash beetles have always been the bane of our existence since we've uh, been out here. And the squash beetles don't seem to be able to kill those plants. So. Those are a winner in my book. This is the bed that when we were sitting going, where are we gonna stick the kukuzis? We forgot about them. This bed right here. So the way I'm gonna grow them this year is gonna be kind of cool. I'm gonna use cattle panels and the great big wooden tees that I made last year that we uh, strung up our uh, tomatoes on. I'm gonna use those. 
I'm gonna put the wires, the high tension wires up with cattle panel on top of that. And we're gonna let the kakuzis grow up, grow across the top and hang those gourds straight down. Once the gourds are hanging down, they'll be nice and straight, easy to store, easy to do anything we want with. So I'm going to go get the auger on the tractor. I'll plant these great big teas. I think it'll look pretty cool. So this is where one hole is going to have to go. This is pretty much how my cattle panels are going to be spaced. So I need a hole there. I should have laid these out first. I'm going to need a hole outside of the bed right here. And that first hole I dug is in the wrong spot. So I've got to bury it back in. And actually, if you see where that cattle panel is laying, the hole needs to go somewhere around here. So I'm going to scoot this out of the way. Oh, is that your marking grass? Sure. There you go. Voila, we have a hole. Got my holes dug. You know what? I almost think that uh, using equipment is not as fast as hand tools. I've been using hand tools so long. You just get faster with hand tools than you realize. By the time you set up the equipment, you could have already been done. It was just three holes. These are a heck of a lot lighter than they were last year. Why don't you come around to this side? All right, this one's actually too tall, but I'm gonna leave it. I think it would look really cool if we could get these kakuzis to climb up eight feet. I know they will. They are very vigorous plants. So I'm gonna start with this one, get it leveled. The middle one's okay on the height. The one on the end, the hole was too deep. So when we get down there, I'll just pick it up and we'll add dirt and get it to sit up where it's supposed to sit. I'm gonna get these leveled and tamped in. I'm not gonna cement these in. Uh, they're so big and heavy. I'm not real worried about it. We're gonna get tamping. All right, that fits that garden bed to a T. <laughs> Anyways, that does look really cool. Like standing, you know, up there, like farther back. It's like, man, it looks huge. It'll look really cool once I put the wires up and then put the cattle panels on top. That'll look cool. I think what'll look the best though is having those kakuzi vines cover the whole thing and having full length kakuzis almost all the way to the ground. All right, we're gonna get out of this sun and get cleaned up. Alrighty, I have a project that I need to do today. Actually, I don't need, need to do it, but I want to do it. But I'll talk about that in a minute. First, I realize it's four o'clock and I need to get dinner started. So I am going to make chicken pinwheels tonight, which is very, <laughs> see, you excited about that? <laughs> very simple. It's just bread stuffed with chicken. I usually do green onions, um, cream cheese, and some seasonings and stuff. And then you roll it up, slice them just like you would cinnamon rolls, lay them out on a 
cookie sheet, bake them. Super simple, super easy. So I'm gonna get that started before I get my project done. Those are gonna sit and rise for a little bit until it is time to bake them. Man, I got sunburn. You did. I can feel it on my arms and my forehead. The sun is hot today. All right, so you made us some chicken, chicken, pinwheels. chicken pinwheels. These are actually really good, like really, really good. It actually kind of makes me sad. Why? Because they look like cinnamon rolls. They, they do. But they're not cinnamon rolls. Meat cinnamon rolls. Meat, Meat cinnamon, cinnamon rolls. rolls. Meat rolls. Meat rolls. Meat rolls. Meat rolls. Yeah. Pinwheels. pinwheels. See, yeah. pinwheels sounds a little more attractive than... Fancy. Than meat rolls? Yeah. <laughs> meat rolls. Alright, let's eat some meat rolls. <laughs> okay. okay, my project kind of got sidetracked for a little bit um, until after dinner. So, Ben and the boys are at karate and the baby's in bed, so I have a few minutes before I gotta like start editing and shutting down for the night. I'm gonna get this done, hopefully quickly. It shouldn't take very long. What I'm working on tonight is cowboy candy. I, y'all, I was influenced heavily by the internet last year. <laughs> I saw everybody making cowboy candy last year, and usually I'm not one to like, you know, jump on trains and stuff like that, but I saw it, and we had a ton of jalapenos last year, like so many jalapenos. And I was like, that looks really good. I don't love spicy stuff, but I enjoy spicy on occasion. And Ben really likes spicy, and I was like, well maybe this is something Ben will really like, and maybe I'll eat it a little bit. Turns out Ben didn't love it, it's too sweet for him. He doesn't like a lot of sugar in his hot sauce. But I ate all of it that I made pretty much by myself. <laughs> I didn't make much. I only made like two pines last year because I was just trying it out and I didn't want to make like a whole bunch if we didn't eat it. But I ate it all and I loved it. I've put it on everything. Like it goes on my eggs, it goes on rice, it goes on like everything. Super, super enjoyed it. So I have some sliced jalapenos that I put in the freezer last year and I cut them up and put them in the freezer with the idea that I would make like, I don't know, like jalapeno popper dip. I've used some in chili. But we haven't used them a bunch. Um, for whatever reason, we're just not eating sliced jalapenos. So I have a bunch left, and I decided I'm gonna make more cowboy candy <laughs> because I'm kind of obsessed and I want more. I'm gonna try it with the frozen. Hopefully the texture doesn't change too much, but I think even if they did get like smushy, it won't be too bad because this is like kind of like a condiment that you put on top of things, so it won't it won't matter that much if it's a little squishy. So I'm going to get this going. I'm using just a recipe that I collected from a couple different people last year and kind of combined them and did what looked good. So this is going to be, I think I'm going to double this, but the base recipe is a cup of apple cider vinegar, a cup and a half of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, and then a teaspoon of pickling spice, or I did a mix that had a teaspoon of turmeric, a teaspoon of celery seed, and some garlic powder in it. And then you boil that, get it boiling until all the sugar melts and it's kind of syrupy. Toss your jalapenos in, sliced, bring it back up to a boil, let it boil for, yeah, like five minutes until they're kind of shrunken a little bit and then you jar them. And then you can can them, but I did not can them last year, I just did the two and I put them in the fridge and they lasted for like, however long it was, six, eight months. And they last just fine, but you can can it if you want to preserve it. I probably won't again this year because I don't think this is going to make very much, and I'm going to eat it probably very quickly, <laughs> so I'm not going to bother canning it. So I'm going to get this put together and boiling and get these in there so I can get this done and finish up my project for the day. So the recipe that I told you was for about a pound of sliced jalapenos. And I've done, like I said, I'm doubling it because I have about, probably it's probably about two pounds, but it might need a little bit more. So I might have to add another batch to this, but we'll see. Once you get the peppers in the jars, then they actually take up a lot of space so you don't need a whole lot of syrup. Alright, 
I like to fill the jar, <laughs> spicy, um, fill the jars mostly with pepper first and then put the brine on top. That way I just, it doesn't take it that many jars and I get more peppers in one jar. So unintended bonus that I did a couple weeks ago is once I finished up all the cowboy candy, I took the brine and I boiled some eggs and I put boiled eggs in the brine as a pickled egg. And oh my word, y'all, it is the best pickled egg I've ever had. And I love me some beet pickled eggs, but this cowboy candy pickled egg was like amazing. It didn't turn out super spicy, which is kind of a bummer, but the flavor was just so good. So I'm kind of making more cowboy candy with the intention of totally totally pickling more eggs once I use up all these jalapenos. <laughs> all right, I'm just gonna top these off with the brine. Again, I'm not gonna be canning these and processing them to seal them. I'm just gonna stick this straight in the freezer, or the fridge, not the freezer. And they last in there for quite a while. And I think that also helps to keep the structural integrity of the pepper, um, especially since these were frozen beforehand, although they don't seem to be suffering at all. So because I'm not processing them for that extra time in a canner, they're not going to get mushy. I'm way more excited about this than I probably should be. There we go. Done. And that took about 30 minutes, which is awesome. And now it's off my list. All right. That's it for the night. So we'll catch you guys on the next one. Mm -hmm.